hi guys and welcome to my youtube channel esp daniela so for today's video as you already know from the thumbnail and title i will be talking about the top 10 college freshman mistakes that no one really talks about so for context i am currently a graduate student i just finished up undergrad last year in 2021 of the spring and i have a lot to say regarding this and honestly limiting this to just 10 tips is not nearly enough because there's so many mistakes that college freshmen or other years alike make so with that being said let's get into this video so mistake number one this relates to signing up for your college courses a lot of times people think that their energy level will be the same as it was in high school and that will transfer over to college but that that will not happen i can already tell you that right now so if you are going through your virtual shopping cart trying to see and pick out which class that you want and you're seeing like the same class offered of where it's monday wednesday friday versus tuesday thursday choose that tuesday thursday because you will not feel like going to class on a monday after you are already off on the weekend and you won't feel like getting up for a friday class either and also on that note when it comes to signing up for these classes if you can avoid it do not sign up for 8 a.m classes because you will more than likely skip that like i did so as an example of this my freshman year i was just like a two minute walk from my chemistry class it was right next door in the building and i, I never, never showed, showed up. up i only I showed, showed up for, for exam day. day but i still got an a because i watched a youtube video but anywho don't sign up for those 8 a.m classes you're not going to feel like getting up you're going to skip and you're simply just not going to be in the right mindset to learn because you're still trying to cognitively get yourself together so another mistake that freshmen make is not taking the clep exam or maybe not even simply even knowing that the clep exam exists so what exactly is the clep exam if you took like ib or ap classes taking the clep exam is similar to taking like the ap exam of where you are getting college credit for that course and from what i have heard from those who have taken it they have found it to be even easier than passing the ap exam and it is cheaper to do so if you perhaps like barely failed the ap exam you can instead take the clep exam and get college credit now i will make sure to link in the bio description of this video the differences between the ap versus clep exam so you can get a full idea of what you're getting yourself into so the next mistake that freshmen make is bringing their car to campus if you are someone who let's say you are attending a college like me of where it is very close to where you live like just 30 minutes to an hour away in my opinion you don't really need a car there is public transportation available but of course if you're uncomfortable being on public transportation especially during the pandemic and covid i totally get that in that case have a car but during undergrad all four years i did not have a car at all i didn't miss having a car because i could walk to places i really enjoy how college is like a walkable community you don't really get that much in the u.s especially in texas it's just so big okay so on to the next mistake oftentimes freshmen make the mistake of submitting their assignments late and this isn't just like particular to freshmen but also any grade level so as an example of this a lot of times assignments and classes they will be due at 11 59 p.m which is like a minute before midnight and so some students they might get the time mixed up like i have oftentimes of where i mix up a.m p.m noon versus midnight and then i submit it late so make sure that you thoroughly understand the difference between the two and also look into time zones because let's say that you are a college student that is remote from campus like it's an online program and you're based in texas but the online program is based in new york eastern time eastern time is one hour ahead from texas so make sure to also look into those time zones okay so next mistake i'm not even not sure, sure what, what number, number this is but oftentimes students especially freshmen do not take the time to form connections with their professors and this is so important because if you are trying to apply for like internships or scholarships and other competitive opportunities you need a strong reference letter from like at least one professor 
especially a professor that is relating to your major because that is even more relevant as opposed to a professor that's not in your major. So make sure to get on top of that. And I know that it is significantly harder to get like strong letters of recommendation, especially during the pandemic. So with that being said, one thing that you can do is to create a habit of occasionally going to the office hours of the professor that you're looking to have write your letter just so they can warm up to you and get to know you better. And then once you feel that you got them comfortable enough, that's when you go in and ask them, hey, would you be willing to write a letter of recommendation for me? And then once they write that letter of recommendation for you, make sure to also get their permission of where you can edit their, their document, their PDF or whatever it may be, because there are gonna be a lot of opportunities you're applying for, internships, jobs, scholarships, fellowships, etc. So let's talk about staying in your dorm too much and not networking. I made the huge mistake of doing this during like my freshman and sophomore year. I was coming from being very dependent on my roommate because my roommate, we had known each other since like middle school. So I would just stay in my dorm almost all day, binge watching Korean, Korean dramas, dramas and anime, anime and, and webtoons, webtoons, manga, manga all, all that. that. And I wasn't networking like I should have been and I finally got into the habit of doing so later during like my junior and senior year so with that being said do not make the mistake that i did of not putting yourself out there of not getting involved on campus joining organizations and just being a hermit because that will have a drastic toll on your mental health and as for the final mistake that freshmen make with college this pertains to financial aid scholarships see i can't tell you how many times i've gotten emails and dms from people related to uh, financial aid because again my youtube channel and overall content first started out with scholarship advice they'll tell me that they didn't know that you have to reapply for the fafsa every single year like they thought it was just like a one-time thing but that doesn't make sense because your economic situation changes year by year let's say that one year your parent has a raise but then the next year they get laid off and so then your economic situation has drastically changed and also on that note there's a misconception relating to scholarships that you can't apply as a current college student because if you look at like the national database of all these scholarships out there throughout the world most of them are mainly reserved for high school seniors but you can apply for scholarships as a current college student i personally have won over 10 scholarships during my junior and senior year of college and then like four or five scholarships during grad school and then all the other scholarships i won 30 total those were during high school my junior and senior year so with that being said make sure that you are continuing to apply for financial aid Aid. and also do not give into the misconception that you can only win scholarships if your family makes x amount of money there are scholarships that do not account for at all knowing your EFC on your FAFSA or all this other information because I was in the same predicament of where I couldn't really get much of any aid from the FAFSA because my dad suddenly got a raise but I still was able to win 30 scholarships so please guys continue to apply and tying back to what I said earlier about getting involved on campus this is really important for scholarships as an example of this I had a student who was a finalist for this $5,000 scholarship but they ended up not choosing her and so their feedback to her because I told her to seek constructive criticism whenever you are rejected you should totally do that by the way and their feedback was that they rejected her because she wasn't sharing enough of what she was doing as a current college student how she was involved on campus etc and so that one aspect of her application that was basically perfect was what prevented her from getting the opportunity so when she updated her application she was instead able to get a different five thousand dollar scholarship so keep that in mind and make sure to get involved make sure to update your applications for any competitive opportunity you are applying to and i have all these different ways you can benefit on basically copying my strategies to winning scholarships getting all expenses paid internships I previously even worked for Disney slash ABC News Live, Good Morning America, all this stuff. See, I believe that I have essentially decoded the algorithm to getting competitive opportunities with applications. So anywho, make sure to look into all the resources, personalized services I have, my book, my online course, and I hope that this video was helpful. I have several other playlists that you can look into related to college advice, scholarship advice, tech advice, whatever. But yeah, this YouTube channel is like a one-stop shop of just about anything you need to get ahead in life. Hope this was helpful and have a wonderful day. Bye.